I have been using the iOS 26 beta on my iPhone 16e ever since the first beta came out. And now that multiple betas have come out, things have changed. I wanna share features that actually make a difference on a day-to-day -day basis. Things that are going to improve your experience, whether that's visually or with feature enhancements like improvements to battery life. So I wanna start with something that you're going to see all the time, which is your lock screen. So I've got a picture of my dog here, and what you'll see is that the photo has this spatial effect. And iOS 26, whatever photo you're giving it, it does a really good job of analyzing that photo and then giving you a spatial feel to that space. It's almost as if the picture becomes alive. So if you've got a kid or a pet or just any photo really, you can enhance it by giving it this spatial effect. At the bottom, you get the two customizable controls, which is nice, but what I really liked is that the icon sizes for both of them are actually larger. This just makes it easier to in engage with. Last but not least, at the lock screen, my favorite thing is going to be the clock. Not only can you extend it to a size that is likable to your preference, but you can also adjust whether you want it to have that liquid glass feel, or you want a solid color, or you can change any of the colors. It's really customizable. And when you do extend the clock, the widgets, you have a option to put them at the bottom instead of underneath the clock. So it's not going to interfere with the photo that you're trying to use. The next thing that you're going to be engaging with is your home screen. As you unlock your device, you're going to find that new liquid glass. I have it set to the dark mode. And here's where I honestly prefer the flat look that we had on iOS 18. I think that was just done really well, whether it was tinted or it was in dark mode, because here, even though I have it in dark mode, it's pretty bright. And this is just going to be something that, whether you like it or whether you don't, is just down to personal preference. But what I will say is that I did like the fact that Initially, I found it to have too much of that glass feel when the first beta rolled out, but then as the betas have evolved and now we're on beta four, this look is something that I can live with and I'm sure I'm gonna grow accustomed to. But I think what would be best to kind of suit everybody is just give you a slider that lets you choose how translucent or glassy you want things to look. I think that would be really helpful because some people are going to love the glassy look and other people are just not going to like it. And it's going to come down to your personal preference. So having a slider would have been really cool, but overall it's done in a really beautiful way. Whether it's your control center or whether you're just browsing around your iPhone, it has a really nice effect as of beta four. I personally really like it. And again, it's something that I'll be able to get accustomed to. Now, the next feature that I really found helpful is adaptive power mode. And I think this is really going to benefit people that wanna just get more battery life out of their device. If you've watched any of my iPhone 16e reviews, I will link those down below. But one thing I touted in those reviews was the battery life. And it was great until I put the beta on there. But with adaptive power mode and currently on beta four, that has been enhanced to a whole different level. Like I'm getting crazy good battery life, which for me personally, I really like it. And what's nice about that is that I've had it on for over a week now, and not once have I noticed that it's actually hindering the performance of the device. Because what the software is doing is basically adjusting things like background activities, reducing brightness, and things might take a little bit longer to do but I haven't noticed anything to where it compromises my day-to-day -day use. So that's a feature I found really helpful, and I think a lot of people are really gonna like this going forward. Another feature I've found really helpful, which I used recently when I was put on hold, is called Hold Assist. And what that basically does is that as soon as the music starts going, the iPhone will ask you, hey, do you wanna use hold assist and it'll just give you a notification whenever the person on the other line returns 
So that way you don't have to sit there listening to the music. So I think this is really going to be helpful, especially if you're using a smartphone for making calls, which I personally don't do a lot of, but for the few moments that I have been able to use this feature, I think it's going to be really helpful. The next feature I wanna talk about is also a communication one, and that is found within messages. So if you've used a group chat and you've been chatting in there, now there's actually individual indicators for whoever is typing, which is really helpful because with previously, you just never even had that feature, right? And if you sent a message into a group chat, you never knew when somebody was replying. So being able to see those individual chat indicators, that is gonna be really helpful. Another helpful thing is like, let's say a couple of your friends created a chat group and you are planning a party and you're all pitching in money, then if you use Apple Cash, you can actually now send Apple Cash within groups instead of how you could do it before where you would be able to individually send it to someone. Another notable feature inside of the Messages app is going to be the ability to choose background wallpapers. There's a bunch of preset options and honestly, this has been something that should have been here a long time ago. It's been available on Android for a very, very long time and in apps like WhatsApp, but it's nice to finally have that. You can choose a photo that you want or you can choose from a bunch of different preset options or if you really want to, use Image Playground to generate your own. So I like this because this gives a little bit more customization and a little bit more of a unique personality to each conversation that you're having. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the camera app. All the menus are very nicely hidden, but also accessible at the same time. So that is a really nice enhancement that I think that a lot of people even though you're gonna have to get used to it because you're probably gonna be like, wait, what? where'd all my stuff go? But everything is tucked away in a nice manner and things that you're gonna be using a lot of the time like photo settings or video settings, they're nicely available for you with just one tap and you can customize all the different settings at one time as opposed to trying to be swiping around and doing it one at a time. And with the camera, the Photos app, we got the return of just the library view, which I think ever since iOS 18 came out and the Photos app, everyone that opened it for the first time was probably like, what is going on in the Photos app? That is no longer the case. You still have collections, but Photo Library is back to being the library that it used to be. So that is also a very nice addition. Last but not least, if you're someone that uses CarPlay, Liquid Glass has also made its way over there and it looks really nice. Although I will add once again that in the beginning when it initially came out, I had so much trouble with just legibility all over and it really ruined my experience because I use CarPlay a lot just simply because it offers me a hand-free experience controlling the car with the iDrive wheel that I have in both of my cars is just so helpful. And also one nice addition is just this widgets view where you can have the different widgets that you're used to adding to your home screen or your lock screen, but they look really nice. And if you have a bigger display, like in one of my cars, then you can have three different widgets, but if you have a smaller display, it's going to show two. So I think that just looks really nice. I often like to like play a podcast or something and just have the widgets showing on the home screen of the car's infotainment system. And I personally really like it. And I'm glad that they reduced the glass effect a little bit because some things were just really hard to read. These are the features that I've personally found to be really helpful. And I think they make day-to-day -day enhancements because those are the features that end up mattering anyway. There's always a list of features and there's a bunch more to be found in iOS 26. And I'd love to know if you've been using the beta, which ones have you liked? Drop that in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, just do me a favor, give it a thumbs up so more people can find this video and be able to watch it. And like always, thank you so much for your time. I'm really grateful for you taking the time to be here today. Take care of yourself and I will see you in the next video.